we want to thank you for tuning in to the Unadulterated Truth Broadcast. This broadcast is a live Bible question answer program where you, the radio listeners, at any point and time during this half hour broadcast, you may pick up your phones, dial the number 281 837 2222 with any Bible questions, comments you'd like to make, and we'll give you book, chapter, and verse for all of your Bible questions, and we will listen to your comments as well. I believe we have a caller on the line, and so at this time, we'll go ahead and take the caller's question or comment. Go ahead, caller, you're on the air. Go ahead, caller. Yes. Yes. Hi, Denise. Yes. Okay. Right. We definitely will give you scriptures to support uh, your question. Okay, and, and Ms. Denise says she's a member of the Lord's Church. For those of you who are unable to hear her question, uh, and uh, her concern is, and she'd like to have some scriptures that she can support, uh, that for those who come to her, uh, who offer uh, her to come worship at their particular domination, and she refuses uh, to go to be a part of their worship. Why should we, as members of the Lord's Church, uh, not participate uh, in worship uh, that we don't find in the New Testament scriptures. And let's understand something. I believe uh, there's a misconception in our world about worship. Worship is not about you and I. Let me say that. It's not about you and I feeling good. Uh, worship is not something that's directed personally to you and I. The worship uh, that we offer when we're talking about worship is to God. And God in his word has given us uh, the requirements, the rules, the commandments, the precepts on how we are to worship him. In John chapter 4, and I want you to turn in your Bibles there, John chapter 4, Jesus in his earthly ministry, uh, he tells his disciples that he must need go through Samaria. And the reason he must need go through Samaria, uh, Samaria is Jesus knew that there was a Samaritan woman who was there that he had to have a religious discussion with. And upon Jesus coming to Samaria, this was a group, uh, a group of people who the Jews and the Samaritans during Jesus' earthly ministry, they had no dealings with each other. As a matter of fact, as we're going to see in the conversation, they actually worshipped in different locations. And so they had a different idea about the worship to the true and to the living God, which prompted the conversation between Jesus uh, and this particular woman. And I'd like, if we could, begin the reading at verse number, number just for the sake of time, verse number 11. The woman said unto him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus said unto her, Go call your husband and come here. See, Jesus knows about her lifestyle. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, You have said, well said, I have no husband. For you've had five husbands, and he whom thou hast is not your husband. In that says thou truly. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that you're a prophet. Our fathers, now here's a religious discussion, John 4, 20. She says, Our fathers worship in this mountain. And you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. He tells us something, you worship, you know not what. He says, we know what we worship, he says, for salvation is of the Jew. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him, get this, must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, and so we bring this subject up because there is a religious discussion between Jesus and a Samaritan woman about worship. Did the Samaritan woman worship? Yes, she did. 
But was our worship right toward the God and the creator of heaven? No, it was not. Jesus says very clearly she didn't know what she was worshiping. In other words, they were worshiping in one mountain, and God's people, the Jews, were worshiping in another mountain. And Jesus says that the way the Jews were worshiping was the right worship. Because in order to worship God, God is a spirit. And he must be worshipped in spirit and in truth. And so I want to make sure we understand something. Worship, again, as I said, is not about you and I determining how to worship. We must follow the commands of God in the Bible. God has given us instructions in the Bible. When it comes to New Testament worship, we must follow the pattern, the pattern of the apostles' doctrine. If you and I, and see, this is really going to be our subject on how to study the Bible, how you and I know what, what we do as it relates to worship, how do we know what to speak uh, <laughs> according to what the Bible says, who's spoken to, when it's spoken to, who does it make reference to. We must follow the apostles' doctrine, the apostles' pattern of worship. When the church was established in Acts chapter 2, the Bible is very clear that those who obeyed, they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Hence, therefore, when we look at the New Testament, when we look at the church being established, you will notice, and I'll just give one of the several uh, false things that the denomination, for the most part, most denominational churches are doing, is the instruments of music. Now, I, I, now, the number is 281-837-2222. Now, I want you to be able to call the number and show us, in the Bible, when the church was established, the two posts, the pattern, that you find the apostles taught that we are to use instruments of music made by the hands of man in the worship assembly. See, the pattern we see is... They sang songs. Acts 17 is very clear that God is not worship. Acts 17 and 25. There. That God is very clear that he is not to be worshipped, nor can he be worshipped, with the things that are made with hands. Amen. An instrument is made by the hands of men. Look at Acts 17 25. I'll just to give you the context for I toss it. Acts 17, Paul, uh, the apostle, has gone to Athens. This is when the, the church has been established. Paul is a member of the Lord's church. And he is confronting some people who are setting up worship to gods, and they even set up an inscription to an unknown god. And Paul, who Paul said they ignorantly worship, he's going to declare unto them. But he, in his discourse of telling them about the unknown god and telling them about the god they don't know, which is the god of heaven that created all things, he says in verse 25, Neither is he worshipped with men's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing he give it to all life and breath and all things. You see that there? God is not worshipped with men's hands as though he need anything. And so there are people who have created instruments to worship God, and we understand when it comes to worship for the pattern of the New Testament Christian, we did not and we do not use instruments of music. So when we study the Bible, there's a pattern that needs to be followed when we're talking about how to study the Bible. You have to have a direct command. There has to be something necessarily inferred, or there needs to be an approved example. That is the hermeneutics. That is the science of interpreting scriptures. And there is no such thing to, to, to introduce instruments of music into the worship service of our Lord and Savior today, you have to must have developed a new hermeneutic. Mm -hmm. You have to call in at 2813 and just show us where's the pattern. Where'd you get that from? Where's the example? Where is it inferred at in the Bible, New Testament Christianity, that we are to use instruments mm -hmm. made with hands when it comes to the worship of God? <laughs> and so we have to understand something. Uh, light and darkness has no fellowship. We cannot worship with the denominational world. We, can, and, and we cannot worship uh, with them according to a pattern that you and I do not find in the Scripture. They worship what they do not know. 2 <laughs> Corinthians chapter 6, and I want, if we could, read beginning at verse number 14. I want you to hear, see here, what Paul has said. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, 
And verse number 14, he says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Now, question I wanted to ask you, is a, 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 a non-saint a, a, a believer? No, they're not. They're unbelievers. He says, For what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? What communion have light with darkness? What concord have Christ with Belial? Or what part had he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement have the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God had said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, said the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Okay? And so there are various scriptures in the Bible uh, and various reasons why that those of us who are members of the church, the people of God that you read about in the Bible, cannot participate in worship practices that God did not authorize in the Scripture. And that should be your answer. And you can't be ashamed as a child of God, as a Christian, to give people that answer. You know, it's a shame to me. we got some saints of God. I'm talking members of the Lord Church who are embarrassed about the worship practice that God has designed. You're embarrassed to tell your friends, your co-workers, that we don't have instruments of music and worship because you're worried about being mocked or being made ashamed. But why would you do that if you understand that you're doing what the Lord has told you to do? You don't have to go and participate in their worship practices. You do what God has told you to do, and you do it with the right spirit and with the right heart, understanding that worship is about God, and it's not about entertainment. 281-837-2222. Brother Javier, something you yes, want to add to that, brother? Quickly, I believe we have another call, but oh, before ahead. we get to the next call, I want to read a scripture our brother Polk has sent us uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 21. He says, you cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. He says, you cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the Amen. table of, of devils. So the cup represents the spirituality, the, the commandments that God has given us. We cannot do that and also partake of sin. Now, you have different types of sins. You have sins when it comes to fornication, murder, lying, stealing, and that's dealing with the moral sense. The other sin is dealing with doctrinally, doctrine sin. Uh, like Brother Henry just mentioned, instrumental music is not to be done in the worship practice. It was done in the Old Testament by the Levitical priesthood only. And if you were not of the Levitical, Levitical priesthood, you, it would be a sin to do it uh, in the Old Testament during worship. Now, in the New Testament, there's no example. It's only use the spirit, use the heart to worship God. That's the only scriptures that is given for us to use uh, to worship God. And concerning uh, females that are called pastors, reverends, the Bible says in Timothy that the pastor, that, that he has to be the husband of one wife. So how can a woman be a pastor if the scripture tells us that, she, that he has to be the husband of one wife in order to be a pastor? And so to partake of the cup and the table of devils is to partake in a worship practice that is contrary to the New Testament way of worship, and that's what makes it a sin, to be in agreement with it, to be in agreement with a lie, with false doctrine. And it's readable. It's not something that we have to guess at. We don't have to dream any, any type of dream about it. We can read the scriptures in clear, plain uh, text. And also, if you deal with that situation, because I've dealt with it before as well, where they'll mention to you, if you come to the church where I go to, then I'll go to your church. You have to understand that the scripture says in Ephesians 4, verse 4, there is one body and one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Mm -hmm. One God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and, and in you all. You know, And so going to denominational worship is equivalent to what the... The religion, the main religion in Haiti is, which is a voodoo, is the same similar thing. It's partaking of the table of devils, partaking in the cup of devils. It's the same equivalent scenario if you were to go to, uh, to a witch, even as Saul went to a witch, uh, to inquire about the things uh, of God. And so concerning uh, this subject, you have to explain to them with scriptures, rather divided, and explain to them why you cannot uh, go and worship uh, something that is of Satan. The number calls 21 Amen. I believe we have another call on the line. At this time, go ahead, call you on the air. Hey, this is uh, Brother Cole from Germantown Pike Church of Christ. Yes, how you doing, Brother Cole? Hey, I'm doing good. Uh, I just wanted to 
pretty good. Um, I was just wondering about, um, I had one question. Um, so I've been going to my um, father-in-law's church, and he has uh, people, well, women teaching. Um, and I was trying to tell him that um, it's not for, uh, permitted for them to teach um, uh, based on Timothy, uh, 1 Timothy 2 and um, 1 Corinthians, um, I believe that's 14. Right. Um, and um, I was just wondering, and they always try to bring up the fact that um, in Acts 2 uh, and 17, <coughs> yes. So it comes to pass in the last days, that uh, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your mon- young men shall dream, uh, shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Um, what's the difference between prophesying and teaching? Okay, let me ask you. I got a couple of questions listening to you. First thing I want to ask you: Are you a member of the Church of Christ? Yes. Yes, I, I'm what? a member of uh, Germantown Pike Church of Christ. Germantown Pike Church of Christ. Yeah. Okay, and y'all, okay, uh, do y'all use instruments? No. Do y'all speak in tongues? Uh, no. No, okay, you're a church, okay, church of Christ. Well, you know, what's odd to me... Well, and, no, no, this is, this is not the church I'm talking about. I'm talking about the church that I go to uh, with my mother-in-law. Oh, okay, so you're not talking about something that's being done in the church of Christ. No. Okay, that's what I'm saying. I'm listening to some of the things you're saying, and it's just not adding up. Mm-hmm. Uh, using Acts 2.17... Uh, and then saying they're teaching at a church of Christ. So now you're talking about wrestling with a denominational uh, individual then, somebody who's not a member of the Lord's church. That's what you're talking about? Yes. Okay, but you're a member of the Lord's church? Yes. Okay, and so you're asking how do we explain when, so he brings up Acts 2.17 to you uh, to solidify that it's okay for women to preach. Yes, and he also brings up... um instances where God uses women like Deborah or maybe. Yeah. Okay, my brother. Well, first thing, again, oh, yes, go ahead. Yes, uh, were you mentioning that you go to church with him, uh, brother? Yes. I uh, have been because I've, uh, I've been relocated because I go to college up here in Cleveland, and I'm okay. using um, my own Just wanna, where Germantown Pike is. Well, you know, we pray that you find a church of Christ in Germantown because that is a center to go into the worship assembly <coughs> that is uh, man-made, that is not of Christ, and to go and worship or to, you're missing also out on worship on the first day of the week, which is actually the sin, is to not worship on the first day of the week. Yeah. So have you researched areas in that in that city where there's a church yeah. of Christ? You said yes? yes have. have you found some? Uh, yeah, I found uh, one, actually up here in Cleveland. Amen. Well, we encourage you, brother, to, to not forsake the assembly because that is iniquity. But concerning the question, uh, the prophets, you know, in the Corinthian Church of Christ, they have female prophets. But mm-hmm. the idea is that the scripture tells us in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 14, in verse 34, it says, Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are committed, commanded to be under obedience, as also says in the law. We also know that Philip, uh, he had daughters who were prophesied, who prophesied, but the idea is that even in the Church of Christ when they had uh, female prophets, now they don't have them anymore in the Church of Christ, but when they did have them, they were not uh, allowed or permitted to speak in the assembly or prophesy. Remember the prophets in uh, in the New Testament, in the, in the Corinthian Church of Christ, they prophesied and then they spoke in tongue. They had men who spoke in tongue. They had an interpreter and, and in verse number 28, it says, but if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church and let him speak to himself and to God. Let the prophet speak two or three. Now, it says, let the prophet speak two or three. Let the other judge. If if anything be revealed to another that says by, let the first hold his peace. For ye may all prophesy one by one, that all may learn and all may be comforted. And the spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets. God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all the churches of the saints. And then it deals with the women. Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak. So they did have female prophets, but they were not allowed or permitted to prophesy in worship. Only the male prophets, only the male who spoke in, in tongues during the church worship assembly. Brother Henry? Yeah, 
Amen. Brother Cole, let me. I, I, I mean, you're going to help me and others. I, I got a question I want to ask you, brother, and then you, you can answer it. Are y'all taking the Lord's Supper every Sunday at this denominational church you're going to? No. Just okay, brother. Are y'all? Uh, does he teach tithe where you're going to church you're going to? Okay, well, now, brother, this is what I want to help you with, brother. Now, Javier, he said it in a nice, and, and God bless his bone, but I want to help you, brother. Right, you're trying to help him. You need to, you've got to help yourself, brother. You see, right now, while you're participating in doing things that you shouldn't do, you're trying to save somebody when you need to be rescued. And that may be why, brother, and you're helping out many others who perhaps are listening to this, that may be why you're calling because you don't have the strength because God is not with you because right now you're not walking according to the will of God. And so, brother, I want to encourage you, brother. You need to, if you understood the truth, you understand that there's only one church, uh, one faith, as Brother Javier's already, Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 4, one belief, one faith, one body. You've got to leave from that denominational place of worship, and you've got to worship properly, my brother. You've got to find your church of Christ that is sticking to the apostles' doctrine, and then once you gain the strength uh, that God will give you, and you're doing the right thing that God would have you to do, then I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you something, brother. God will be with you, and he'll give you the power, the right words to say, to help not only your father or whoever you just mentioned, anybody else around you, uh, to see the truth. But first of all, you can't be trying to rescue somebody else, brother, and then you need rescuing yourself, Okay. And so I hope, I hope you take that advice that we're giving in love, and I'm giving in the, in the love, that uh, much love as I possibly can, uh, but brother, you, you, you've got to go find a church of Christ in your area, and you've got to worship God in spirit and in truth on the Lord's Day, because right now, you are in sin and error yourself by forsaking the assembly. you have any questions you want to add or any remarks? Oh, no, that's great. Thank you. Okay, God bless you, uh, uh, Brother Cole. Appreciate that. And hopefully we'll hear from you soon, Brother. I'd like to hear back from you uh, with a good report uh, that you took our advice and you found a church that you could worship in. Radio listeners, uh, uh, the, number is, the number is 281-837-2222, uh, 281-837-2222. Are there any other callers on the line? No, sir. Okay, there's no more callers on the line. Now, uh... Uh, one thing, uh, Ron Javier, I mean, I was in, you, you had something? Now, one of the things we want to do is we want to talk, I want to talk about content. I want to go to Matthew chapter 4. See, the thing we've been dealing with, let me just say this, the reason why there's so many, much different, many different religions and organizations today is because people have different standards of authority. I mean, say that. People have standards, well, this is how I was raised. This is what I believe. Uh, this is what mama taught me. This is what grandma taught me. And so I, I was born a Baptist or Methodist. I'm going to die a Baptist, Methodist, Catholic. And so you have different standards of authority other than the word of God and what the apostles taught. There's no use in getting mad at us. We didn't write the Bible. And we just hold the Bible rightly divided as the standard of authority to live by today. If you can show us where the apostles gave commandments, rules, laws for us to do some of the things that we are hearing taught in the denominational practice, then by all means, all you got to do is pick up the phone and dial 281-837-2222, and we'll be more than willing to lead you out on your scripture that you will use to support whatever you do in your worship practices. But you got to understand everything in the Bible do not apply to you and I today. Let me say that again. Everything in the Bible does not apply to you and I today. God is not going to tell you to go out and build an ark. That was instructions that was given uh, to, to Noah. It will not be given to anybody <laughs> on God's green earth today, okay? I believe we have a call on the line. Let me to, see. Are you calling for a question? Hello? Okay, yes, sir. Okay, we have a caller on the line at this time. 281-837-22. Yes. Okay, we're glad she. Okay, now all she did was was ramble on, talk on feelings, and let me let me say this, uh, radio listeners, feelings uh, means nothing uh, to us, and it doesn't mean anything to God. Now she said she don't care if you're a Baptist, Methodist, and Catholic, as long as you come in the power of God. Uh, but Paul is very clear in Second Corinthians four that we're not to think of men above that which is written, 
And so, you know, people can call uh, with their feelings. You know, the thing about the Apostle Paul is he thought he was right. I'm going to say this. The Apostle Paul, the man who wrote the majority of the New Testament, before he became a Christian, he thought he was right in what he was doing. Having Christians persecuted, he was there at the stoning of Stephen. And so, although he felt like he was right, the truth of the matter is he was wrong. He, he was wrong because he, un, he misunderstood the scriptures that he had even during the time of his life, which was the Old Testament. He misunderstood them. He misapplied them, and therefore his doctrine uh, was wrong, and he had to change uh, based upon what Jesus had told him. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, I want to read this because all she did was call with feelings and what she feel and, and, and everything else. But the, the question is, are we become your enemy because we're telling you the truth? Now, 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 faith come by hearing. You're talking about faith and the power of the word of God? Faith come by hearing, and hearing comes by the word of God. And she had no scripture she gave, did she? Not one. All she had was feelings. But nonetheless, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 4, and the verse I want to read until we're hearing is, and this is given uh, by the apostle, by the apostle Paul uh, himself, 2 Corinthians, I believe the chapter, as a matter of fact, it's 1 Corinthians I want, forgive me. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, I believe that's what I want here. I'm going to look at it. Or is it 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse number 17? I know that's what I want. This is what he said. I'm going to start with verse 6. 1 Corinthians 4 and 6. And these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that you might learn in us, now look what Paul said, not to think of men above that which is written, and that no one of you be puffed up for one against another. Now, she said, I don't care if you're a Baptist, Methodist, whatever you is. Now, my question is, do you find anybody in the Bible calling themselves a Baptist, a Methodist, a Presbyterian, a Pentecostal? Now, 281-837-2222, call in and show us where you saw anybody, when, from the time Jesus went into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God, calling themselves any, uh, I don't care what you are, a Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, that long as you work in the power of God. See, what I want you to understand, radio listeners, is more than what just come out of your mouth. See, people can say the right thing, but if God is not with you, there is nothing you can do to help somebody else. In Acts chapter 19, and I'm about to be done. We're about to wrap up time. See, it's more than just words coming. I know there are a lot of you who say, oh, I love Jesus. And a lot of us, a lot of you are doing many wonderful words. And Jesus said that's going to happen. He said, uh, on that day, men say, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? In your name do many wonderful works. In your name cast out many demons. And he's going to profess unto them, I never knew you. He's going to pray, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. And that's lawlessness. You had no power. You had no authority. You, you, you had no motive. You're, the, the thing you were doing, you, you, you were doing it wrongly. He's going to say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. He says, I never knew you. Why? Because God is not, is not with them. And so it's more than just saying words. It's, it's God with you when you say the words. In Acts chapter 19, real quickly, I'm going to look at verse number 13. The Bible said, Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them the call over them which had evil spirits, the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. You see that? They'd heard what Paul preached. They knew what Paul preached. They knew the power that Paul had through God to be able to cast out demons. Paul was an apostle of God. So they're saying the right words. But look what happened. And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, a chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? Now, now based on what that lady said, oh, just hold you come in the power of God's word. That's what she said. Well, they're coming in the power of God's word. They're using God's word. The, they, they're saying the, the Jesus who Paul preached. Let's see if they helped anybody. Let's see what happened. And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, and he overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. And this was known to all the Jews and Greek also dwelling at Ephesus. And fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. My friend, we must stick with the scriptures, rightly divided. We want to leave the faithful saints of God with Romans 16 and 16. The churches of Christ salute you. We gotta just stick with the Bible. You know, it's yes. not about feelings. It's right. not about how I was raised. Exactly. It's about what is the standard of authority, and that's the Word of God. 
You that's know? right, I mean, that's right. there is no standard, then anything goes. I mean, I can do anything I want. For the Lord's Supper, I'm going to have cake and punch. <laughs> What's wrong with that? If anything goes. <laughs> but, but anything don't go. That's yeah. exactly right. You have to have right. an approved example. You have to. Uh, direct command or something's got to be inferred. You can't be, brother, that's, that is the teaching uh, of God, you know. And look, look at this, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. He says, examine yourself, whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know you not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except be reprobates. He says, you have to examine yourself and understand what's going on. Look at verse 10. He says, therefore I write these things being absent. That's being present. I said, you sharpness according to the power which the Lord had given me to edification and not to destruction. He wants to use the sharpness to edify and not destroy it, but Amen. that's only going to be if they have decided to accept it right. and recognize that the power he's going to bring will either destroy them or build them up. If they're yeah. right, it will build them up. If they're wrong, it will destroy them. And this is the idea, and this is what, what the lady said, power, correct word, but what she misapplied is it doesn't matter where you come from, you've got power. But you read the perfect scripture, yes. Acts chapter 19. 19. Yeah. And those guys are exorcists. Right. That means that you can't be something that you never was and be called that. Right. That's what they used to be. But because God has transferred his power from the Jewish system right. to Christianity only, they found out even by using the exact words of the Bible right. or Paul yes. or what Jesus said at that yes. time spoken they found out it would not have an effect because the demon says, I don't know you. I know Jesus. Right. See, I know that's a thought. I know Amen. Paul. Yeah. But who are, you? who are you? And see, the key is, is that if you go up to a criminal and you don't have on a uniform saying you're a policeman, he's going to fire upon you. Amen. When you are a police and you hold up a badge or something, he's going to think twice about it without the uniform. He's going to say, okay, man, if I kill this guy, it's capital murder. I'm right. going down. Amen. But if you go, you know, I'm just a citizen that loves the Lord and righteousness. Put down that weapon. You better get ready to duck or either right. go to sleep forever. <coughs> he's going to shoot because yeah, he knows you have no authority. power. The authority is from the state and the power is the gun. Yeah, see, he knows that. See, our authority is from Christ and the power is the spirit as well. That's how we know. And Paul knew in Acts 19, those precious 12 souls were not saved Amen. because the speech they gave was about John baptism. And Paul knows, okay, I know about John baptism. It's expired. Right. And now you must be able to tell me how you received the Holy Spirit That's because right. John never gave it. Amen. Although it was in him, he never was able to link them to get it. Only through Christ, through the baptism that is done with their Pentecost Father. Amen. And you can't beat that. Amen. And so that, and you know, it's amazing that we're trying to tell people how to get the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And, and we have the ability to administer it through baptism, but they'll stay with their minister who doesn't have the Spirit. Right. Even John would have told him, go, go with them because I have the Spirit, but I can't minister. It wasn't given to me. Right. We can administer it through baptism. He will utilize us as a vessel, and they will stay with their minister who doesn't have him and can't give you through baptism. Yes, Why yes. would you not want the Spirit of God in you? That's, I'll never, never yeah. understand that. Never. God bless you.